being how he got named Bumpa is because you couldn't say Grandpa. So we kept saying, say, grr, grr, grr. And that came out Bumpa. So that's how Bumpa was born. And one time we were in a restaurant and somebody across the room called out, a little kid called out, Bumpa. And Grandpa said, he can't say that. Ah, that's my name. Selfless. He did everything for everybody and never asked for anything in return. He, uh, he always set himself apart. Very strong personality. Hardworking. Very honest. Dependable. Hi, I'm Ashley Flaherty, one of Vic Flaherty Sr.'s granddaughters. I'm doing this project for him because I wanted to show not just my family, friends, but others who he was while making something special and meaningful for my family, along with it being a part of his tribute to his legacy. My grandfather also wasn't just a brother, son, husband, and father. He was so much more than that, not just to me or my family, but to anyone he met or the things he did. At times, he was close. His grandmother was a sweetheart. I loved her, but she was a very tough, tough person to get along with. His mother was fine. They got along fine, and his brother, they were twins. Like him, I'm also a twin, so like we had like that in common. And plus, when I was little, um, him and my grandma would constantly babysit us, and he would always make sure he was home when we were awake. He was my grandfather. That's that was the most important thing, you know. Like when I would go over, and we would watch a movie together, or when we went out to dinner. We all went to the Cape for the week for vacation, and. We went to a toy store and we bought all kinds of games and we played Beat the Clock. Um, all the new games that had come out on the TV and we played them down there. And we had a whole week down on the beach, it was really nice. In my house, all the work that we did together, putting in the heat system, doing the finished work, the painting, that was some quality time that we got to spend together. My grandfather and his brother were only 17 when they decided to go into the Korean War. They served their country. They did, they were both in Germany. Grandpa was right on the Russian border and he did radio, he was a radio officer. And his job was to listen to the Russians and put out in Morse code everything that they said. And he was right up on the border, sleeping in a tent. Once he then got out of the service, he went and helped his brother at the Little League fields all the time. He had us do the drainage work. The water that comes off the roof had to be uh, piped out. And it, we, we had a, he wanted us to go out by the ball field that's named after him, the drainage pipe. And he walked out there and he said, the wires that light the field up are right here, Bill. And we, he put a five gallon bucket on that spot. And while we're digging, we're 10 feet from the bucket to stay away from. We dug up all the wires. And I go, it was all like spaghetti in the hole. And he goes, we got to call Vic. He came down and he walked over there. He walked over to the bucket, walked back to the wires. He goes, well, I guess I was wrong, wasn't I? That's all he said. We're all like scared he's going to blow a gasket. No, he said, I was wrong. So we'll fix it. Don't worry about it. We had four girls, no boys to play baseball with. His brother had a son who was on the Little League team in Brockton, and he was the manager of the team. And Bumpa helped him do the team, and then when they moved, he stayed with Brockton South, and he became the president, and was there for quite a while until we had two boys. And then when we had the boys, he came to West Bridgewater to help out there. And he started out umpiring. 
in West Bridgewater. And he never, he never took a team. He just umpired. And then he got involved in the running of the league and became president down here. When you would go and you had to sign up. So you had to go to the clubhouse. And back then it was just one building because it was a lot smaller then. And, and he was there, but there was always other people and they would have cigar smoke and you'd walk in and like you couldn't even see at the back of the room. And, I, and I'm not lying about that. As, as the way I remember it as an eight or a nine year old. But so my dad would bring me down there and my, uh, my father knew uh, Mr. Flaherty and they would, you know, talk back and forth. And he would always make sure that he looked at me and he said something. He wasn't down here when I first started. But his first um, coaching debut was when they started soccer here in town. He, along with Mike Ferriston, uh, coached our soccer team, and neither one of them knew how to do anything about soccer. They had a book on how to coach soccer. So that was the first time. And after that, I, he, he never coached me. He was the, you know, the president of the league, so he just took care of that end of it. We lived at the baseball field every day during the summertime. If it wasn't for me or my brother and sister, it was for one of my cousins or their family and everybody else. To get involved with the YBYAA, uh, with the, all the kids, to have something that they could come. We, you know, we supplied uniforms um, and it was cheap money, really. If you had more than two kids, you paid nothing for the third. It was, it's stuff that we gave to the community. That's why we had a tournament every year to collect money so that we would keep the price down and we'd have a full set of uniforms for all the kids. Uh, so I think that uh, he showed with his leadership that people liked working for him. One of the big things I also remember was um, the tournament, the, the West Bridgewater Baseball Tournament. It was organized in such a way that all the towns, it was it was the big event. And it wasn't like it is now where you can play AA ball here, there, and everywhere else. So it was one of the premier tournaments. And I remember they would always gear up for that. They would always talk about it. The YEA wasn't just a um, single effort by Vic. It was always a family effort. All his kids would be out mowing lawns. His wife would be working the concession stand. Uh, it was a family affair. Painting the clubhouse, everything was always green down at the YA fields. Didn't matter what it was, green, green, green. Green dugouts, green fences, green building. I don't know what it was, but it's just been an ongoing joke for years. When you think of the West Bridgewater Athletic Association, to me, he's the first person I think of. Um, I remember as a kid being down there, I, I remember when there weren't even lights uh, around the park and uh, I think he was one of the the big I mean it was a whole team of people but I remember him being a big person doing that I think the best part of it was um, the impact of, of from him was the excitement of how the season was opened right he made it so that they had the parade what he put forth to the parents of the kids that he helped along with the YAA that was, to me, an achievement. Throughout the years, regardless of what he did, he made sure to lead the town in the right direction by benefiting it and staying under budget on projects. He led people with by example. I think he was probably best known for uh, the things that he touched. Uh, I don't think there was any one thing that really stood out because everything he did stood out. Um, again, he... He, there was only one way of doing things with, with Vic, and that was through dedication, hard work, loyalty. Um, uh, it just, he was just a consummate professional. You know, he left his mark on the town at something that his entire family got to enjoy, and now everybody else in West Virginia gets to enjoy too. I remember when he got his job down at Silver Lake Regional, he, and he was working down there. And, um, and he'd come in and he'd be so frustrated. He'd come in and he'd say, you know, today all we do is patch stuff. He says, nobody takes the time to fix anything right anymore. <laughs> and he would be so frustrated because he wanted to be the kind of guy that made things right and um, didn't need to be touched up again. 
So he was a, he was big on maintenance, you know, taking care of things properly. His biggest thing was he was the project manager. He would go out and inspect the things that were they were working on. I think they worked on the library, um, the senior center. He uh, he put a lot of time and energy into this town, and everybody should be very grateful for what he did. Stands to show uh, what kind of a leader he was. He was a terrific uh, selectman. Um, he did a wonderful job with the YAA. And again, he brought his own personality into uh, all of the things that he did. He would even do a sit down every once in a while and talk about the town and give tips to the newcomers at the time in the town hall. I think his achievement as the selectman, he made sure that everybody exactly got what they needed. He would tell me, Jerry, you know, don't bang your head against the wall trying to accomplish things that can't get done. Focus on the good things, focus on what you can do, and just let what you can't change go. A great selectman. He didn't take any baloney. He made sure that things got done right. He, he was very good at, he, was, he wanted to do the best job he could for the town. He took much pride in being selectman, and he brought the same pride to being the project manager. I don't think there was one he had a lot of achievements. He did a lot of stuff for the town. I think they were all, you know, like I said, everything was about the town. Everything was about the community. He put his all into everything he did. I don't think one outstands the, more than the other. Um, I have a lot of memories from the YAA. Uh, now I work at the police department. He built the police department. So that's a pretty big achievement that I get to see every day. We modeled the police and fire department. Every day when I was little, we would go there and we'd go into the trailers and we'd have our Bob the Builder hats there. We'd color his blueprints and we would always go and visit him when he was working. I'd say building the police and fire station uh, when it comes to, to town works, and that was most of his life again later on um, because I have family members who uh, belong to the police department and friends that belong to the fire department. Um, I know it was a big thing in the town. It wasn't the easiest thing for him, but for him to accomplish that um, seemed like single-handedly, um, very impressive. A bunch of the workers would have a lottery to guess what my grandfather would have for lunch when he did the Brockton Hospital project. He worked as a plumber and not a pipe fitter, and that uh, didn't make any, it wasn't any friction involved, but it, uh, it showed that he could do both. And what happened was we had, it was a major renovation and addition. It's what we call the main support building. It was back in the 1980s, the late 80s when we built it. So my boss and I, uh, Mr. Baroni, uh, decided Vic was the perfect candidate for that job to do the OR. We had a lot of other medical gases in the surrounding areas but we did the O, he did the OR for me, or for us. And uh, he, he, we knew he was the right choice. We gave him a co-worker and Vic was neat and clean, which is one of the uh, priorities for medical gases because the piping, when you buy it, is capped on both ends and cleaned internally at the factory. The fittings that you solder onto are the same. You have to either wash them or buy them washed. And Vic was clean in nature anyway, so uh, it worked out perfect for us. So I put him up in the OR, explained, didn't have to tell him too much because he was, he was uh, a student as well as knowledgeable about anything in piping. And it was a tremendous amount of it. We probably worked there two months, or he worked there a couple of months in the OR. And there was like three ORs in a section there, along with uh, supporting rooms around the, the perimeter. Cystoscopy had the same thing, the valve, the alarm, and the outlets. The uh, uh, ORs had maybe three walls with those on them, three different areas along with valves that shut them off and alarms that indicated a failure. 
So he was in charge, of, he was doing all that. From his projects and work to Selectman, he left something behind wherever he was, and he was the type to be serious when he had to be. Paul Project. Well, it was tough because he, he asked me to do it before he passed, so um, it was tough to do that, but he gave his word that he wanted to finish. So he wanted to make sure that it would get completed. So um, when he asked me to do that, I said, absolutely, I'm gonna finish it so that his name, you know, he never not finished something. So by doing that, he fulfilled his promise. My grandfather might've been known as the clerk of the works, but in every role he had, he made sure to do it right. Everybody had a place in his life. It was never about the winning, about, it was about the fun and the kids. I think he got the town together for different projects, got people involved. People started caring, I think, a little bit more. It wasn't, you know, just throw money at a situation, let's sit down and solve it. I mean, he probably left it in better shape than it was. One thing I learned from him that one person can make a big difference if they just, you know, go for it. Rick Senior was, uh, you couldn't help but like the guy. He was a hard worker. And you realize he did, what he done in this town, he did for nothing, volunteer. He truly uh, showed uh, families that uh, community service and caring for your town is uh, a family affair. And uh, he not only led in the community by example, but his own family. And uh, it shows by their involvement still in the town today, his uh, kids all take still an active role in the community. My grandfather didn't just leave an impact on his co-workers or family, but everybody in the town. Awesome. Just plain awesome. It was that's my dad. Every time that when when there was a a gathering that honored Bumpa, it was that's my father. Proud. Very proud. It made me proud. Showed what kind of me and my father really was. Long overdue, I think. That's what I think. Like you shouldn't wait until people are out of it to honor them like he had been doing it long enough where if they had done it you know a little sooner it, you know I don't know why in, in culture we have to honor people too far after the fact it should be done while they're doing it because so they can you know really appreciate it um, but it was absolutely deserved I mean 100% I was proud of him the best thing I've seen is the day he passed or the day after the town hall and the selectmen gave up this huge display at the town hall honoring him. That was up for a week and then during the service at, on the drive-by, they were all standing at attention, not only at the town hall but at the fire station. And I was glad to see the town honoring him for all the achievements that he, he did. My grandfather didn't like getting recognized for anything he did. He just liked to do the volunteering. This award was created to honor and remember Victor R. Flaherty Sr. for more than 50 years of service to his community. My father thought all of, all of you should do what you can to make your community stronger. And we saw that a little bit tonight. He thought you should assist your community in any way that you can. My father loved serving and volunteering his time. Probably one of the hardest things I do. Um, because when you sit there and you talk about someone that meant so much, um, you get choked up. So every year I do. Um, so it's very difficult, but I sit down with all the recipients prior to, and that's fulfilling because they all knew or heard of Vic Flaherty Sr and uh, honored to have the name associated with him. Hey, Lois, can you come up? But uh, Vic's involvement and love and passion for the town and everything he did, you were there by his side also. And I know when I first became selectman, I spent many, many hours over the house getting some wonderful words of wisdom from Vic one-on-one -on -one and you some little side notes from the kitchen. So I want to present you with some flowers and say thank you to you and your entire family for everything you've done 
and for the honor to receive this award in Vic's name. Thank you so much, everybody. I had a number of interactions and experiences with Vic over the years and his different positions and uh, different volunteer efforts. And it really meant a lot that I was nominated. Even just a nomination would have meant a lot because uh, someone like Vic, they're a rare breed. They, they give 100% and they look for nothing. Uh, the ironic part about the Vic Flaherty Award is if he ever won such award, he wouldn't want it and probably wouldn't be there to receive it. Uh, he didn't do things for awards and for recognition. He did them because it was the right thing to do. He would put 110% in, but he never wanted to be out in the front line and be recognized for what he did. He just did it because it was the right thing. Nowadays, the committee recognizes other people who stick out for what they did in the town. He'll never be forgotten. Um, the things that he did for the town, the things that he did for the people of this town, um, he made the town a better place. Um, always looked out for the town, the, the townspeople in all the buildings that were reconstructed. Um, and all the projects that he was involved with. Well, all the projects that he did throughout the town, the senior center, the high school, the baseball field, he just left his mark everywhere he could, trying to better the town for the, his family, and they get to use it ongoing for the rest of their lives, which is awesome because his legacy turns into our legacy so we can continue to better the town ourselves and hopefully make an impact as well. Well, as he did. I think there's a little piece behind in every building that he did. There's a piece behind, left behind from the selectmen. He kind of leaves a piece behind on everything he did and every project, every one that he was involved with, every kid he touched. I don't know that you see too many Vic Flaherty's come along. People wanted to work with Vic and for Vic uh, because of the way he treated people. He almost single-handedly populated this town of West Bridgewater. <laughs> Fourteen grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Six children. Yeah. He did his share for the town of West Bridgewater. I might have been young when my grandfather passed, but he was the type of person in the town that left too great of an impact for it not to become his legacy. He might be known for what he did, but to me and the rest of my family, he means everything.